was one rough ride. Oh my god, it seems like forever since I've been here. Well, once again, coming to you live on tape from an undisclosed secret location somewhere deep in the bowels of downtown St. John's, Newfoundland, comes in the Library of Graphic Literature with your host, me, Wallace Ryan. Anyway, hope everyone's doing well here today. Mm -mm. A little sip of tea there. It's good not to have that smoke detector going out there. Oh, let's have a good old spin of the old the old spinner rack. So, um, no big news that I can think of. Well, I do have some big news, but I'll wait towards till the end of the, this to tell you that. It has to do with that thing there. Uh, it's not a huge week in terms of books, but uh, any week with books is a good week. So, um, let's get right down to it. I know, uh, and for you fans out there, hockey fans, the uh, Stanley Cup playoffs have started again. I don't know how many of you are into hockey. I am, so I lose a lot of uh, a lot of time to hockey this uh, this time of year. I'm a Boston Bruins fan too, by the way. For for people out there, any other fellow Bruins fans, we're going all the way this year. And as a matter of fact, I just watched uh, a game of soccer before I came in to do this. Uh, I watched uh, Arsenal beat Watford, so I'm a bit of a uh, soccer freak too. And uh, Arsenal's my uh, my London team anyway. Manchester City outside of London. So anyway, let's uh, enough sports talk. Um, oh yes, and uh, coming up within, it's either this week or next week, I'm not going to tell you because it's going to be a bit of a surprise, I'm actually going to start doing interviews. So I'll be interviewing basically publishers, artists, and all kinds of cool people. So stay tuned for that. It may be sooner than you think. Might, might be today, but most likely not. Anyway, so, what's our first book here today? Oh, got a little bit of a bang on it there. Our first book today, from the Marvel Masterworks Library, Ooh, comes The Avengers, Volume 19. Now, this is a lot of uh, David Michelini, George Perez, and John Byrne. Um, the other cool thing about this is I had all of these comics when I was, uh, when I was a kid, so it's... Uh, I always like it. I always like picking up a a, a a masterworks or any collection really that came from my original uh, childhood collection. As a matter of fact, that was one of the things that started my library. Was I originally started this off just as a way to recapture my childhood uh, collection of comics because when I had my own comic book store, I used my childhood comic collection as the back issues. So four years later, when they were all gone, I had to have something. I had to have some comics. And this was uh, in the mid-90s. And uh, one of the things I did have left over from the comic book store were a few uh, hardcovers, some Mar Marvel Marvel Masterworks, as it says. And I uh, figured, okay, I'll do that. I'll be able to reclaim it. And you wouldn't believe some, some of the, even the more rare and obscure books and comics that I had as a kid that I've been I've managed to regain in hardcover form all but very there's probably a few out there but not many and of course a lot more since then so anyway this is uh this has uh, john burns run on it which was uh one of my favorite actually i like to i was a burn fan uh growing up uh from uh i'd say from the iron, iron fist days on that's that's where i came to to uh to fall in love with uh John Byrne and, uh, and just about any comic he he did or he moved to or whatever I picked up when I was a uh, <coughs> when I was a kid. So uh, I had a huge collection of uh, of John Byrne. Now this one also has some cool uh, comics from uh, George Perez, another one of my favorites. And there's a Carmine Infantino. Uh, I was more of a Infantino fan from the '60s and that his '70s and '80s work. It just didn't, just didn't do it for me. But anyway, here, have a look here. Ta -da, ta -da. 
Uh, this is some of the burn stuff. Great gargoyle. Then got into. Oh, here we go. Got into George Perez. Gotta love Perez, man. Love the Perez. So some cool stuff there. There's the Infantino. Can recognize that even upside down. And some more Perez. Even more Perez. Yeah, so uh, any of you uh, Burn fans or Perez fans, this is probably a good book for you. Or if you're just an Avengers fan, and then there's the Wonder Man short series that's tacked on to the, to the end of that. So, uh, how about that? That's a nice start to it. Do, 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 do. Very, very good. Very good uh, run of comics. Okay. Moving right along here. Yeah, we have from Abstract Studios. Oops, excuse me. I barked, you probably couldn't hear it. Away with you. Is uh, Terry, Terry Moore, Strangers in Paradise 25 XXV, so XXV, yeah, 25. Um, so this is the uh, this is the sequel to Strangers in Paradise. Um, I love love Terry Moore stuff. I have I have just about every omnibus that I could get my hands on. I'm still missing the one thing I am missing from my old collection, which I would like to get, was the original Strangers in Paradise omnibus. And uh, Terry, if you're listening out there, publish uh, do 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 another printing. It's uh, I do have, a, I've met a lot of collectors and all that who weren't able to get hold of uh, one of your other uh, hardcover versions of uh, Strangers in Paradise, but uh, think about putting it out. I know I'd buy it, and I know that a lot of other people would buy too. Anyway, this one, uh, I haven't read this yet myself, but of course I'm a huge fan of Terry Moore. Absolutely stunning artwork. Stories are amazing. Anything else? So I'm dying to read this. It's one of the, I wouldn't say underrated because everyone knows how good Terry Moore is, but definitely a, a comic I think more and more people should should be out there reading. Rachel Rising. Oh, there's, there's one I got. I love Rachel Rising, actually. Very, very unusual. Very, very unusual uh, comic. And Motor Girl. I haven't read Echo myself. But uh, hopefully we'll see uh, some more uh, some more reprinting of, uh, of this classic, classic strip. Or comic, sorry. Comic book. Mm-mm-mm. Oh, nice sip of tea there. English breakfast tea by the way today oh uh, here's one and I don't need to unwrap this one and I know some of you are going to say oh but Wallace I know you have this and it's true I do have this and what I have is and it came out this week the complete life and times of Scrooge McDuck Woo! this was one of the first because uh, I'd read some duck stuff when I was you know younger and all that but it was only when I got older and uh, looking around for some, something different to read and I seen I actually seen uh, online at the time this is a few years ago when this first came out that uh, the life and times of Scrooge McDuck had actually won an Eisner award and when I seen that it was just like whoa well this got to be good I gotta have a read of this just out of pure curiosity and I read it and it was Fabulous! So I, uh, I actually bought the boom copies and that, and uh, love that. Then of course I had the uh, the Don Rosa library where this appears. But uh, when this came out, especially with 
all the stories in the line. It's basically the the two books of uh, Life and Times along with the Life and Times Companion smushed together in one big story put out in two books. So um, I just couldn't help myself, right? I hate myself sometimes for stuff like that. But hey, it's comics. And who can hate comics for too long? So yeah, great art. He's Rosa definitely is without doubt one of the great duck artists. Absolutely fabulous storytelling. The, the stories themselves are wildly imaginative. And uh, absolutely fabulous. Like I say, I've read this two or three times at least so far since I first discovered it. And I think I probably will read it uh, once I get the second one out, which I think is only going to be uh, next week or so. So anyway, yeah, yeah, I'm definitely going to be uh, picking this up for and uh, picking up the second one, and then I'm going to sit down and maybe some night when I got nothing better to do, I'll sit down and I'll reread, fall in love with an old classic. Ah, so beautiful. <laughs> Oh, okay. Now, one second now while we have a... Oh, oh, oh. Ah. Another sip of tea. And, last but not least, comes... Do, 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 Two-Fisted Tales. Another fine one of the uh, EC archives from our friends at Dark Horse Comics. Once again, like I say, the I know some people don't like the coloring or whatever, but oh, come on. <laughs> it's EC Comics. EC Comics in any form just about is cool. Except I actually was never a big fan of having them in black and white. Sort of takes away a lot. Now, the new Two-Fisted Tales. <laughs> okay. So this collects Two Fisted Tales issues 36 to 41. 41. Uh, so this is volume 4. Uh, I love, I mean, as many of you who've watched this show for since I started doing it, you know that I'm a big fan of the EC Comics. The, um, not only for the historical importance of the company itself, and what they did at the time, but actually, to me too, the content of the stories, I love the, I just love them, I love the artwork, the, 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 twi the twist endings to them, um, but uh, it's just, I mean, to, to me at the time, this, when people were reading this, this must have been such a revelation in terms of comics, because this was, I guess this in a, some way was showing that, you know, comics can be for all those people too. So anyway, we have uh, John Severin, uh, let's see what other artists here, Reed Crandall, John Severin again, a lot of John Severin in this, which is great because I love John Severin, and Marie, his sister, doing the coloring, and jeez, a lot of it is, uh, God, it's a lot of it, oh, a Gene Colan and John Severin, now how does that sound, I mean, come on, uh, John Severin, John Severin, John Severin, <laughs> oh, a Jack Davis, oh, George Evans, oh, a Bernie Krigstein, ooh, ooh, ooh. <gasps> Wally Wood, okay, and another George Severin, so, uh, so yes, yeah, sounds like uh, George was working his heart out, and uh, sounds like they finally got some of the other guys in to give him a hand, which is so cool, but yeah, the, uh, I like war comics too anyway, so, uh, Two Fisted Tales. Oh, and it has U.S. Marines. I like this with the things going down the side there. Anyway, let's have a close-up look here for, for you folks. I mean, Severn, he, he was he was one of my all-time favorite uh, artists. Still is. Crandall there. But yeah. Another Severin piece there. Ooh, ooh. 
another Severin there. So yeah, great. Great, great stories. The art, like I say, art absolutely magnificent. Oh, there's another Severin. Yeah, very, very... Uh, John Severn. Yeah. Some very, very cool stuff there. Yeah. Love the two-fisted tales. Can't wait to read this one, too, actually. I think I'll try to read a bit of this tonight, anyway. Oh, here we go. George Evans. George Evans was one of the, uh, was one of the, uh, I guess, unsung heroes of the EC Comics back there. Or one of the lesser known uh, of the lights. But, uh, I remember him actually from, he did some stuff for Marvel in the 70s. That was where I sort of got to know George Ev Evans too. And, uh, very cool stuff. And, oh my god, this looks to be... This is it for this week. Okay. Now, remember I told you I had a surprise of sorts. Now I've posted about this, but I haven't said it officially during my videos. So for those who uh, are down on Facebook and all that, um, this June here uh, in St. John's, Newfoundland, uh, we're having what we call the Pure Comics Festival of Graphic Literature. So it'll be four days of uh, hopefully sun, fun, and comics. We're going to be having basically um, we'll be having a contest for for best comic page of comics. Uh, we're going to have some signings. We're going to have a lecture by uh, my good buddy uh, Andrew Lohman, a professor here at Memorial University of Newfoundland Labrador, uh, and then for the uh, the two days, the Saturday and Sunday part of the festival, we're actually going to have workshops. So we're having workshops in penciling, inking, lettering, uh, coloring, and uh, working digitally. Uh, I'll be teaching some of the classes. My good friend uh, Paul Tucker, who's best known for his uh, book Tet from IDW, he'll be uh, doing the, the coloring because he's a master colorer. And the digital one will be uh, with Mike Fian from uh, DC Comics uh, Snagglepuss Chronicles. So we've got a few workshops. Now we'll also have a little uh, vendor's area and a, a salon or what some people call an artist alley. We're trying to be a little bit more fancy th than that. And uh, so yeah, it should be, should be a lot of fun. It's only going to be $2 to get in. So if you're looking for a fun place to go and you have lots of money and you can make it uh, all the way up here to St. John's Newfoundland for our little festival, come on up. Uh, the coolest thing is, it will be the most easterly comic book arts festival in North America. How's that? And here, as a matter of fact, I got, I'll show you the poster. I'm almost finished it. It's, it's inked. Jeez, I only got a little bit of inking left on the top. But basically, it's it's a drawing. It's it's a scene set here in Newfoundland in, in, uh, by a river that next to the school where I, uh, I uh, went to school when I was a kid. And uh, I want to do a really nice pastoral scene and then I figured, well, who am I going to put in it? So I figured, hey, I'll just take some uh, some of my old characters from when I was uh, from teenage years right on up into my adult years. So I decided I'd use them. So, and here we go. This is said poster. Now there's the my, my couple of characters there, looking around. There's all the rocks, the trees in the background. Oh, and the bird over there with downtown uh, bus. And there's the last bit, bit left to be inked up here. And some cool clouds up here too. And uh, it's, this is going to be our poster. And it's going to be really, really cool because uh, my friend... Uh, Paul Tucker will be coloring it, so you know it's just going to look great. <laughs> mm. So yeah, so any of you uh, fine folks down there in North America, out traveling around this uh, 
summer or, or if you're coming up this way anyway, make it the last uh, week of June, just after school. Lots of time, lots of fun. Anyway, I'll, uh, I'll be posting pretty soon my, uh, my first interview uh, uh, show coming up. I'm not going to tell you what it's called or who it's going to be, but I'll post it actually probably the day before I post it. I'll, I'll post a little notice in the Facebook group that it's coming, and I'll let you know who the special guest is going to be then. It's a great special guest. Okay, that being said, I'm going to call myself one of those boom tubes, and I'll see you folks next week, or, well, hopefully at the end of this week if our comments get in on Don, but I don't know. What, with the holidays and all that? Oh my god, sorry, <laughs> this, this boom tube is pulling me away. Love y'all, bye! Ah!